Ողջույն, դուք միացել եք Viva MTS-ի պոդքաստների 8-րդ էպիզոդին եւ այսօր շատ տարբերվող պոդքաստ եմ ես սպասում, որովհետեւ մենք հայերեն չենք զրուցելու։ Օրերս առաջ Հայաստանում տեղի ունեցավ Hey Growth կոնֆերանսը, որը հավաքել էր իր շուրջ Tech Volorti մի շարք ներկայացուցիչների, ստարտափների, հիմնադիրների, ոչ միայն Հայաստանից, այլև շատ այլ երկրներից, Ռուսաստանից, Կազախստանից, Վրաստանից եւ այլն, եւ այսօր իմ հյուրը Hey Growth կոնֆերանսի տնօրեն կազմակերպիչ Տանյա Սուկմանսկայայի հետ է։ Մենք զրուցելու ենք անգլերեն, որովհետեւ Տանյան հայերեն չի կարող խոսել, եւ նա եկել էր Հայաստան հենց այդ նպատակով կոնֆերանսը կազմակերպելու։ Hello, uh, I'm happy to he- to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation. I'm very glad to host you. Of course, this is something strange for our listeners because all our listeners are used to listening to the Viva MTS podcast series only in Armenian, and this is like the first time we're having it in English. So, thank you very much. Uh, for me, it's uh, actually um, the first time too uh, to talk at a podcast in a podcast i think uh, uh, in english so i'm sorry in advance for my english uh, and i hope everyone will understand uh, i hope maybe 50% of what i'm saying if if you don't you can uh, text uh, i don't know me <laughs> No, your English is great and I'm sure everyone will understand. Definitely we're going to receive some comments or feedback and people are more than welcome to share their feedback on our YouTube channel, on Facebook, Instagram and definitely yeah, they can find you on LinkedIn and text you if they have any questions. So Tanya, how um, did you come up with the idea to organize the Hay Growth Conference and how did you arrive? in Armenia. We decided to uh, make the first conference here uh, last year. Uh, it was the uh, first time uh, um, we do an international conference uh, uh, because before that we were doing like three years of uh, uh, conferences for product managers and founders uh, in Russia. And uh, uh, in May in 2022, we decided to go global as many of us uh, Russians did. Uh, because of the events uh, of political events and also because we saw that uh, many of our audience uh, were growing were uh, making career making uh, global startups and uh, it was interesting path to follow you organized the first conference last year in Yerevan and this year again you did it in Yerevan what was the incentive Actually, we really liked it here and we liked Armenian people working with them uh, and uh, we liked the city, we knew the place, so it was kind of kind of easy to organize it here the second time, uh, more easy than uh, in any other place. And also uh, we knew that uh, more uh, like many people from uh, our attendees, uh, potential attendees of the conference uh, uh, stayed here uh, and uh, it was easy for them to come to the conference uh, in Yerevan. How many attendants did you have? We had uh, this time we had like uh, about uh, five or six hundred uh, of people uh, at the conference uh, and the conference was two days. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's really great. I think that people really like. But can you please tell, like statistically, are there all mostly Russian people or Armenians attending the conference? I would say that uh, it's uh, kind of maybe 80% of uh, Russian-speaking people, uh, people with Russian roots uh, that um, mainly live outside of the Russia. So they relocated, they moved uh, to different countries, uh, to Armenia, Georgia, Cyprus, um, Europe, uh, Serbia, and some from to USA. Uh, but uh, they are Russian-speaking still. And uh, maybe 20% people from, uh, not from in other countries, but not Russian speaking, uh, from Armenia, from Kazakhstan, uh, Georgia, and all, all of these uh, countries. I think all these people uh, understand and speak in Russian. Why in that case you decided to have English as the conference official language? Yeah, that's a good question. And uh, I heard it a lot uh, during uh, the conference uh, that was like a couple of days ago. Uh, but um, we need to remember uh, the main goal of um, creating this conference and creating it uh, global um, 
doing it in Yerevan and uh, in other countries. Um, we wanted to help uh, our people, our audience, uh, our founders and uh, product managers uh, to move to the global. Uh, the conference uh, uh, is aimed uh, to connect people and to and to help them grow. So. If we do conference in uh, Russian language, uh, there is no point. Uh there is no point to it because it uh, doesn't help uh, the main goal uh, to go global and um, uh, of course uh, for some russian speaking people it was hard to perform and to speak uh, publicly in english uh, but i think it's a process they that we that we teach our experts our professionals uh, how to communicate in english how to uh, present in english and uh, also i think we need to work not on like uh, russian language at the conference but uh, uh, on bringing international people from different countries um, that don't speak Russian, uh, maybe from Asia or from Europe or from USA. And uh, if we do that, if we work on this metric, uh, it will be a truly international conference, I think, like uh, uh, maybe this year or next year. So mainly your goal is to take it like abroad to make it a global conference, international. Uh, yes, do I get it correctly? Yeah, uh, we, want, we want to make Hey Gross a truly international uh, brand. And uh, we have a Russian brand, a Russian brand for, for conferences, and we make them in Russia. Um, and Hey Gross, uh, we plan on doing uh, uh, several times. Uh, maybe uh, we want to repeat the conference this year, but in different city. Uh, to uh, to bring more internationality to this conference yeah so next year you're not planning to have it in Yerevan I don't know about next year uh, but uh, we plan to, to do hey gross conference uh, like two times um, uh, in different cities this year so first uh, place is Yerevan uh, second place we don't know yet maybe uh, Belgrade or we don't know. We we will have uh, like a team meeting this Thursday, and we decide what to do next. Um, but um, yeah, we want to try different cities, and uh, probably the next year we will return here in Yerevan because uh, it's like uh, we will have a loop, and uh, maybe we will have uh, some city main cities where we held uh, heroes Yerevan, and maybe somewhere. Tanya, can you share some insights about the conference, maybe the attendees uh, feedback or overall, because like having 500, 600 people, it's very good result. Thank you. Um, some insights. Uh, well, I think the main insight that uh, people were telling me and uh, were thanking me for uh, at, the, at the conference um, uh, that uh, we did a really great job uh, bring, bringing people together. Uh, some uh, some guy that uh, I didn't even know come to me and uh, uh, told me that uh, we we're doing a very important thing that uh, uh, people need to uh, to talk to each other not uh, online but uh, offline uh, uh, you know to share experience and to to hug uh, even uh, to to party together and uh, when everybody are in different places it's really important to to bring everyone at one place so i think it's the main insight of the conference overall uh, there are a lot of insights um, about uh, you know the content uh, how to go to global market uh, how to what mistakes did people make uh, throughout the previous year because last year we talked about uh, what to do and we uh, had some uh, ideas about how to do the global um, global disruption market uh, and now uh, we came to the conference with uh, a lot of experience we did a lot of mistakes uh, we tried and tried and tried we uh, and now we wanted to talk about how 
what, what did we do and where we succeeded and where we not. How did you come up with the topics of the conference? Because the main topics covered both product uh, growth, right? Marketing, um, product management, etc. So how did you come up with the entire theme and topics? We had uh, two main stages, uh, two main tracks. It was product growth and growth marketing. And um, we tried to find uh, interesting cases of um, uh, products growing on global markets on in different countries. We tried to mix uh, uh, different um, different past we wanted to not, not to make uh, only success stories uh, but uh, focus more over uh, on uh, experience maybe not so successful but uh, more help, helpful for people and uh, we tried to collect uh, speakers f who work on different uh, in different countries from uh, Armenia from Israel from um, I don't know USA uh, even Asia Indonesia um, so uh, we tried to make um, a d diversity uh, in our content um, how it work out worked out uh, you tell me <laughs> Yeah, that was quite interesting. But I also have another question. Um, I think last year there were more Armenians taking part in the conference compared to this year. Can you please tell your insights? Uh, what are the reasons that we have this change? Uh, it's not actually... Um our idea that we want less Armenians. Uh, we um, wanted to, to bring more uh, Armenian companies and international companies, of course, uh, but um, the market uh, now is kind of a uh, in a crisis or something like that and um, many companies uh, just don't want to share uh, some experience uh, maybe a bad bad experience or they um, even if they have uh, something to say uh, maybe participating in a conference it's not is not uh, the main uh, uh, focus of uh, many companies in armenia and also global market uh, because everybody has some troubles now uh, in different countries so uh, companies come to our conference mainly because uh, they want to hire people and uh, to make their each hr brand uh, better look better uh, and uh, in these circumstances, uh, when uh, it's uh, like higher freeze everywhere and uh, no money for um, for each other, uh, they find it hard, like pointless, uh, maybe to come to the conference because they can't hire these people who come to the conference. And that's why I really uh, thankful for uh, this company that uh, participated in the conference because. Uh, um, we still need to, as I said, to bring people together and to have a good talk about about what's going on. So I think that's I answered. Maybe you have more. Yeah, that's a very interesting insight um, because we're really having this market disruption currently, especially in the tech and startup ecosystem. So what's your uh, mindset on this? What do you think? Uh, what are we going to have in the future? And how do the companies actually uh, benefit from such conferences, given the um, like uh, cutting the expenses, uh, especially for conferences and s such things. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, there, you asked me like two questions. Uh, first question was about uh, uh, what will, what we will have next, and uh, I think that. Mm, it's it's tricky question because uh, uh, from this point uh, it's obvious that. Um, uh, it's kind of a crisis uh, in different uh, spheres and in tech especially but um, I think that to uh, like I look forward to the bright future uh, and uh, I think that um, uh, in the end of 2023 we will have uh, some rising uh, and uh, success stories uh, will be more often uh, because um, people will adapt uh, to this uh, circumstances and uh, they will um, find a way to work out uh, the things uh, so yeah I think that uh, it will be better uh, like a couple 
months or maybe half a year. Yeah. And the second uh, question was about uh, what company uh, benefit, uh, how company benefit from the conference. And um, I think um, especially uh, if you have um, remote workers uh, and uh, almost every company has remote workers now uh, and uh, remote teams is one of the hot topics uh, everywhere. Um, so. Uh, if you have remote workers, uh, even if you don't want to hire them uh, more, uh, you still need to um, create uh, a good uh, space uh, for your own uh, employees. And uh, if you uh, help them to communicate with the uh, with community uh, and uh, to have fun at conference and to uh, learn more, to grow as a professional, uh, it works uh, very good, uh, maybe not for growing your HR brand, but but uh, you know, not growing your company, uh, not growing your team, but uh, growing your HR brand actually too. Because if you if your employees come to the conference, uh, they have a blast of energy to work uh, at your company. What do you think about the Armenian um, startup ecosystem? Having Armenia as a tech hub or having these developments in the overall tech ecosystem. What are your insights? Because how many days have you stayed here? Uh, I'm, I've stayed here, um, I think, two weeks. I, I will leave tomorrow uh, and it will be two weeks uh, overall. So yeah, two weeks is not very long time, but you have organized this conference, the Hay Growth Conference, which brings tech people together uh, already twice. So definitely you have some insights about Armenia. So can you share, Tanya? Yeah, about um, startup culture here and uh, tech culture, I think it really amazes me because uh, there are a lot of uh, like so cool products. Uh, sorry for my uh, for my expressions, but see, I, I'm I'm really amazed uh, about uh, many companies that uh, um, were founded in Armenia, like Pixar or Podcastle, that were helping us uh, creating this uh, podcast and um, many others. Uh, uh, and um, I think Ar Armenia um, overall is very, very interesting. And uh, uh, I see the growing, uh, growing here. Uh, and, uh, you know, like, uh, it's a base to, to grow a startup, a good base. Yeah, we're also very happy having such great achievements by the Armenian people. And those achievements are seen and are appraised globally. So that's a very great thing to acknowledge. So um, I will be very happy to see more hay growth conferences held in Armenia, maybe in different cities. What do you think about Gyumri or Vanazor? Have you been there? Uh, sadly, no, I, I haven't been there. I've been, um, you know, in Diljan. Uh, it's near the Yerevan, uh, so it was easy to travel there. Uh, but um, I haven't had uh, much time to travel around Armenia, uh, but uh, I wish I had to. And uh, I plan on returning here um, more, maybe, uh, maybe not next year, but in a couple months uh, here because a lot of my friends uh, live in here. And um, about um, conference in different cities, I think uh, it's a good idea uh, because I know uh, the experience of uh, uh, TUMO uh, Educational Center and they create uh, different educational like spots in different cities. And I really like this idea. Uh, and maybe uh, not uh, such big conference that we did in year one, but uh, maybe small meetups uh, would be great in different cities of Armenia. Since you told that your friends are living here currently, yes, they have relocated to Armenia. What are the insights they share about Armenia? Um, actually, uh, they really liked here because they live uh, here more than a year. Uh, some people uh, plan on uh, living here a long time uh, and uh, it really um, I'm really glad that uh, they decided to do that uh, because uh, um, I really like this place too and it's uh, warm it's, uh, they say that um, it's 
everything in one so you you can uh, go uh, and see nature sites and you can uh, feel the city vibe here and uh, have a party have a festival and it's really nice here to live since we talked about the armenian experience and having you here in armenia i have prepared some very quick five questions for you uh tanya what are the three things you liked about armenians well three things i like about armenian uh first of all and i think everybody says that but uh, Uh, still hospitality and uh, it's really warming and it's um, really nice uh, to be a guest in Armenia uh, thank you all for that um, and the second uh, thing I think it's um, I, re I really like um, that Armenian people are um, feeling this um, bond of a nation I don't know uh, that uh, they are really uh, strong believers in uh, uh, the Armenian nation uh, they help each other uh, even if uh, they are not in the country uh, and uh, I really like that uh, the idea of uh, connecting and uh, staying close together and the, th the third thing uh, that amazed me a year ago when I uh, came here the first time uh, that um, uh, I was visiting um, many educational uh, educational projects here like ape school uh, Tumo and all of this and uh, talked to the people and uh, someone at ape school I think uh, told me that um, Armenia or Armenian people decided uh, to make uh, the um, national idea uh, is education that uh, Armenia is a country for education and I really liked this uh, I think it's a brilliant idea and a brilliant nation national um, um, like bond I'm so happy and excited that you have this profound and deep insights about Armenia and Armenians. That's really kind of, you know, exciting. Um, you want to say something? No. Um, Tanya, okay, so one thing you didn't like about Armenians, be honest. <laughs> Uh, it's a tricky question uh, because um, I, th I think <laughs> I can uh, remember one thing this morning. Uh, I was uh, walking to, to you to record a podcast and I was in a hurry and um, uh, some people were very slow walking and I noticed uh, and yesterday when I was walking around the city, I noticed that um, people are um, Uh, very often slow walking here uh, and uh, I I'm used to have a rush and uh, I'm always in a hurry so it's kind of not uh, vibing with me you know yes maybe that's true maybe we haven't noticed because we're living here but yeah that's an interesting insight we have to be quicker <laughs> okay so Tanya what's your favorite Armenian food uh, I like uh, I, I think it's called Jinjal uh, of Hats uh, maybe Yes, exactly. Uh, I like uh, this um, uh, bread with uh, green uh, leaves inside of it. Yeah, I like this. Uh, what's the funniest word you learned in Armenian? Uh, word? Um... I I learned a funny expression. Uh, I I think I can't uh, say it now, but I I know the meaning. The meaning is like ironing ironing the head. Uh, you know, it's really strange for me. Okay, I can stop laughing. But do you know how to say it in Armenian? I think it's Gluch uh, Ardukel. <laughs> That's very funny. It's Gluch Artukel. <laughs> okay, well. Um... Okay, I, I will try harder. <laughs> Who has taught you this? <laughs> That's very funny. You know, when you organize a conference, uh, there are some difficult times and <laughs> difficult, <laughs> difficult communication sometimes uh, because everybody is stressed out. So uh, this expression uh, just happened one time or a couple times. Okay, and the last question, Tanya, what's your favorite must see place in Armenia? Uh, I really liked, um, you know, the stone waterfall, I think it's called. Um, uh, my friend um, had, who moved here uh, had a wedding uh, near the stone waterfall and uh, I visited it uh, like several months ago in uh, October uh, and I really liked uh, the beauty of it.
Nice, you have quite interesting insights and feedback about Armenia and Armenians, and I'm very happy to learn that. So, Tanya, we are out of time, and I would like to thank you very much for joining me in the podcast episode. I hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for uh, bringing me here and inviting me here. Uh, it was a really uh, nice time spending with you. Մեր պոդկաստի էպիզոտ նայսօր ավարտվեց եւ ինչպես նշել է ամենասկզբում այն տարբերվում էր մեր մյուս բոլոր էպիզոդներից որովհետեւ անգլալեզու էր եթե ունեք հարցեր կարող եք գրել մեզ եւ մենք սիրով կպատասխանենք եւ եթե ունեք հարցեր տանյային կարող եք գրել իրեն լինկդինով կամ մեր ինստագրամյան էջում կարող եք նշել ձեր հարցերը շնորհակալություն եւ մաղթում եմ հաջողություն լավ մնացեք